Okay, hi there. Uh, welcome to the first in a series of videos and sessions on our Head Start course for A-Level Economics. The aim of these videos and activities is to help give you a feel for the sorts of issues that economists are interested in and also show that economics is a highly topical academic subject that changes every single day. In this first video, we're going to start by thinking about the difference between macro and microeconomics and the ways in which micro and macro can be linked. So first of all, what is microeconomics? Well, micro considers the economics of our everyday lives, the millions of decisions that we as households take uh, on a daily basis, and also the impact of businesses, business activity in different and often related industries. So micro is the economics of families, individuals, businesses, and markets. Macroeconomics is a broader concept. It's the study, the analysis of the economy as a whole. And it also analyzes the global, international economic system. So let's look at some examples of micro and macroeconomics. At a micro level here, we see a newspaper uh, a headline saying that prices for high demand products, such as long life milk, uh, hygiene items, pet food and rice and pasta have risen sharply in the last four weeks. The, the market price of some of the staple items in the supermarkets has been going up in large part because of increased demand set against supply shortages. That would be a microeconomic issue. Contrast this with macroeconomics. Another headline, the UK economy could see an extra 2 million people unemployed and a 35% fall in GDP due to the global economic crisis. Macroeconomics is a much broader, wider, uh, big picture economics. Go back to micro. Cocoa growers in Ghana fear that cocoa prices, which presently stand at just $2,100 per tonne, will continue to fall during 2020. Yes, the macroeconomics of the world economy but the cocoa market in Ghana and the thousands, many thousands of small farmers and uh, growers there, that is essentially a microeconomic issue affecting the Ghanaian economy. Macroeconomics, the Bank of England governor that warns that GDP in the UK economy, the Bank of England's new governor, Andrew Bailey, are fearing that GDP in the UK may have dropped by more than 30% already since the pandemic crisis started. And of course, the UK government introduced a uh, effectively a lockdown on the economy a few weeks ago. Take uh, some headlines in newspapers. Both of these uh, headlines came from today's newspapers. The I paper reporting that there's hope for a vaccine in the autumn and the Times Business page offering an article on China. Well, if you look at those two newspaper pages, uh, vaccines is microeconomics in action. It involves the pharmaceutical industry racing to try to find an effective vaccine, vaccine for coronavirus. Eventually, the bulk of those vaccines may be bought by the government and used within the NHS, for example. But there's also a market for vaccines where demand and supply factors influence the prices that buyers and sellers are willing and able to pay. And then on the right, a headline that the Chinese economy is in a recession for the first time in 30 years, in three decades. Potentially a huge macroeconomic issue, and not just for China, but also for the rest of the world economy, since China now accounts for about 20% of, of global output. Uh, we finish this introductory video by reflecting that very often micro and macroeconomics are linked. They are interrelated. So consider this headline from the Financial Times, about the number of businesses that are closing. One quarter of companies in the UK have temporarily closed because of the coronavirus breakdown, lockdown, and the majority of those still operating have reported lower turnover. That's the FT's reporting there at a micro level. And those decisions about whether individual businesses carry on uh, in, in business when the lockdown is relaxed, well, essentially those are taken at a micro level, at the level of the firm or the industry. But of course, those decisions can also have, in aggregate, very important consequences for the economy as a whole. So this video has looked at the, the difference between micro and macroeconomics as an introduction. Uh, in the next video, we're going to take, uh, take a look at a really key concept, gross domestic product, which is a measure of economic activity.